Hello everyone and today I am here to present you about the concept of demography that is sex ratio. Sex ratio as a concept is very important indicator of gender balance in the population. Today our country India is facing a problem of declining sex ratio which was 9 for approx 941 in 1961 and today in according to 2011 census it is 940 so let's understand the concept is uh, what all about and see some reasons that why it is declining in understanding sex ratio um, the first question arises in our mind that what is its definition and why um, it is important as a demographic parameter so first of all sex ratio is the number of females per thousand males at a specified time period if we go um, into more depth of this definition we can divide it into four forms first of all sex ratio in the first phase that is primary sex ratio which means ratio of fertilization then we have secondary sex ratio ratio at a time of birth then we have tertiary sex ratio that is ratio in a sexually mature organism and at last we have quaternary sex ratio that is in the ratio in the post reproductive age um, so this concept of sex ratio is most basic uh, among the most basic of demographic parameters and provide indication of both the relative survival of females and males and the future breeding potential of a population. Um, this concept is very important because it not only tell us about one parameter but is also tell us about many other aspects of society like this uh, what is the actual status of women that uh, is there any prevalence of uh, ideologies of like of patriarchy like what is the societal norm or does society provide respect to the fellow women next slide um, so let's get more specific to our country in our country the sex ratio is 943 uh, according to the 2011 census um, which means that there are 943 females for every thousand males now one thing which is very important is that um, the, in our country the sex ratio is skewed which is not very uh, which is not in the favor of uh, women um, presenting a very grim picture or which is a very dangerous sign the child sex ratio is uh, of 919 according to 2011 census these figures are so let's coming back to the what we mean by skewed sex ratio by saying that um, sex ratio in india is skewed we mean that um, there is a imbalance and bias toward men uh, which is a very dangerous sign as I have told already uh, and uh, this also mean that um, it, this also indicates that uh, there will be a higher female fetal mortality rate and um, uh, and any other type of female uh, infanticide and etc so particularly in india sex ratio have high variation between states like in kerala we have one uh, sex ratio of 1084 whereas in haryana it is of 879 and uh, this particular problem is in certain states where there is an active sex um, selection by sex selection by parents and girls are killed even before they are born okay now what are the factors which indicate that the sex ratio is declining in India? So as written here, there are broadly classified four factors. First is sex selection abortion, neglect at birth or childhood, cultural preference for the male child and at last failure in the implementation of the law.
and this is most important various laws like prenatal conception and prenatal determination act of 1994 have been already uh, launched which are uh, which target is to uh, uh, to uh, bring out the rights of women and uh, the pitch or the problem of the declining uh, or to uh, increase this decline of sex ratio there is also a common conception in the society that male child will add to the wealth and extend the bloodline and take care of parents at a old age hence um, a preference for a male child has all, always been a norm in specifically in indian society various steps were uh, are also taken by the government in order to decline the sex ratio like uh, the main scheme in this are the beti bachao beti parao andolan and the sukanya samriddhi scheme beside this ministry of women and child development along with ministry of education uh, have launched many of the schemes like of uh, making education more affordable and accessible enhancing the education and health infrastructure uh, in order to empower women women themselves have launched many of the uh, agitations like uh, many gender sensitization scheme campaign uh, making women safety cells ensuring the safety of women on public transport etc okay now let's come to the conclusion despite the policies which we have seen um, in the previous slide there exists uh, still a problem uh, uh, for the girl child the social economic forms of description and uh, discrimination and the evil practices of female infanticides and for uh, foeticides still still persists it is uh, thus very important to focus on improving the existing policies we have a variety of policies policies and if our bureaucracy is stranded out in order to implement those policy at a uh, in a very accurate manner we are able to ensure um, uh, we are able to reduce the gap between the two genders that is male and female and we are able to ensure um, social security and safety to women at last i would like to safely infer that we need to provide our women's four e's that is empower educate elevate them and excel them in each and every difficulties or challenges challenges they are going to face in the future now thank you